Hey, everybody. Welcome home to Mighty VC Points Community Hall Live. We're starting off each show like we always do with people getting an opportunity to get the notifications and the UTEL, YouTube algorithms and Facebook notices to go out to everybody and let them know that we're live. So we start the show off with this pre-show chat and countdown with this very simple question. When are you going home next? So, Ron, it's you and I tonight holding down the fort. What's coming up, buddy? How you doing, Chad? Good to be here with you this evening. And uh, I have a few on the books. I uh, uh, Unfortunately, I know you won't be able to be there with me any longer, but I do have in 13 days, Jackie and I will be out to the West Coast uh, with some of those brand spanking new, kind of still new, first time using them, Disneyland Hotel points, and uh, staying in that Garden Duo studio, which uh, after doing some more research, it looks like it might be one of the best rooms on the on the tower property. With the balcony, uh, it's definitely going to be yeah. selling out to to owners at eleven months. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. I seeing. don't know anybody who stayed there that hasn't been raving over it. Nice. And, and then after that, we have uh 276 days. November twentieth, we'll be heading out for the first time as well. We're going to be checking out Vero. We're going to Vero Beach for a couple of days, and uh, and then about twenty days after that, believe it or not, in 296 days, we have a a tentative. Uh, two bedroom book at the Disneyland Tower that the family will be coming along with. For we're gonna, we have a, I think we're gonna have a wedding reception in Arizona. So we're gonna spend three nights at uh, Disneyland and then drive down to the Phoenix area. So looking forward to that. Maybe, maybe try to sneak one in in July, but I don't Come know. Come on down, yeah. Ron. Like, I know. I know. <laughs> it's not Fourth of July without your your annual Fourth of July trip. So you are correct. You are correct. But how about yourself? Oh man. So I I've, I've been rocking this software and I think I'm just going to have to pay the people cuz it's been really helpful and and people have really 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 been loving it. So let me come back in and add this thing into the screen. And So here we cool. go. Now I got to pull down some of the banners here. Gina's not with us tonight, guys, so bear with us. And but I got this is paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be me clicking around, pointing around everywhere tonight, but uh, 120 days to our pre-cruise Vero meetup. And that, that would be the pre-cruise part being our friends over at the DCL duo podcast, phenomenal Disney cruise line podcast. If you're interested in Disney cruise line, give our friends, Brian and Samantha a drop and uh, check out their show as well. Christy and our, our Facebook group as well as part of the uh, DCL podcast, but DCL duo has got their crews coming up. A bunch of us from Mighty VC Points kind of sort of ended up on the same cruise. And then I was like, well, if all my friends are going and Brian and Sam is going, I'm going to join it as well, at least unofficially. So then we decided we were going to meet at Vero prior to the cruise because it's sailing out of the Port Everglades terminal there in Fort Lauderdale. So we were just going to head over to Vero, drive on down about an hour and a half from Vero Beach down to the cruise terminal that morning. And Go check it out. Maybe it's two hours. We'll we'll be Googling it just to, to make sure we're good and, and getting there plenty, 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 plenty early. But then after that, my family, my family, family vacation, my real family vacation starts to kick in. And we're buying a round trip from Detroit to L.A. And we're going to spend a day at Universal Studios, get up the next day, fly to Alani. And then we're going to be at Alani for about five or six nights. And then after that, we will be coming back and spending three nights at our home, brand new spanking home for my family. I've been there two, three times already. But the villas at the Disneyland Hotel got a two bedroom booked. Super excited about that. Super excited to take our family to our new home resort. And this isn't just a work trip for me because like before I'm doing research for the podcast and shows and trying to learn as much as I can so I can share enough great information with all you guys out there. This is my actual family trip, and I can't wait because I'm not working on that trip. I'm enjoying my family, and that's going to be awesome. And then shortly after that, we're going to be back at Disneyland because some of our great listeners, Steve and Nick, are hosting a meetup in a grand villa. So we've got uh, 160 days to that, and then, or 237 days to that one. And then we just added a DCL cruise in 2025, which is 414 days away. You can book that now. It's still got pretty close to opening day prices. If you'd like to do us, it's a four-day cruise from San Diego down to Mexico, back to San Diego. 
and it times out with Gina's Easter break week as well. So we'd love to have you guys there. You can free to book through your own travel agency. If you'd like to use one, let me know. I'll make some recommendations. Or if you want to do a point trade there, you can use our sponsor over at DVC Rental Store. And that would be awesome. So sounds like you got a boring couple uh couple months coming up here. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's certainly true. <laughs> yeah. That's certainly true. And boring couple of months of a lot of Disney stuff coming yeah. down the pipe. The only problem I see here, Ron, is the fact that I got such a big gap between that, that Grand Villa meetup and 414 days in there. Like, what? yeah, that's just not right. So I know we've got some Gina trips coming up with uh -huh. her birthday and all of that, but that's what I've got going on, guys. And I know this October we're doing another meetup here. We're celebrating Gina's 50th in the cabins. And so right. she's not with us tonight. It's her holiday weekend break, and I think she's at SeaWorld today something along those lines but yeah yeah so let's come back in and check in with some of our listeners here and let me give it get a second to just shut my door yeah <laughs> okay let's get back to this and we'll start to tune in here so sorry about that uh our buddy mark allers says 13 days to Oki West Grand Villa, and those are the amazing good deal in all of DVC. Oh. They are the lowest point Grand Villas. DVC has, did not know what they were doing when they priced no. those out. And yeah, it's pretty awesome over and there. Not just lowest, but by far, like not yeah. even close to the next one. They're, they're cheaper than some two bedrooms out there. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely true. Definitely, definitely true. Somebody on Facebook is saying Copper Creek one bedroom. Uh, to be determined sometime this fall. My buddy Jared will be here in three days at the wow. Riviera nice. Resort, and we'll have to definitely meet up, Jared. And Caleb's saying 26 days for their Riviera pre-cruise and Polly post-cruise, and then 120 days until the Vero pre-cruise meetup, and then that cruise, and then the Old Key West post-cruise with that. So we're looking fun to hanging out with Caleb there. That's twice the summer. Two cruises for them, man. Awesome. Way, yeah. to, way to knock it out. And then Mark is saying 45 days to an Old Key West studio. His daughter is doing a spring break with friends, and they will have their own grand villa at Old Key West. <laughs> so, ooh, wow. That's quite the... Uh, Very know. trusting father, Mark. <laughs> yeah, but, I, you know, I, I he's got a magic man. I'm sure he's on the reservation oh, yeah, and popping absolutely. in. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, I know his, uh, I know his family pretty well now because we've got good, to hang out good. multiple times. I don't think he has an awful lot to worry about. No, I was just teasing. Yep. Yep. And somebody on Facebook, 286 days to Oki West for a week, man. We are loving on Oki West tonight. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Holly is saying 40 days until we spend 10 days at Walt Disney world offsite. And that's because they're point hoarding so that they <laughs> for that Alani, have the 279 right. <laughs> days until we spend nine days in Alani. They just went this last year. I told them they would be hooked, hooked, hooked. And sure enough, they are. And by the way, the, uh, the bar there is named off the hook, the pool bar. So <laughs> they, they definitely got hooked. They're and on the hook. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm totally hooked. I can't wait to get back this summer myself. And then Judy P, who I got to hang out with earlier today, has got oh, nine nice. days until Boardwalk and Animal Kingdom Lodge Kadani. And then Linda, who I almost got to meet this this last week uh, while she was here, just left. And she got a Boardwalk two-bedroom and she had a lovely rehab there. Beautiful. They're beautiful. As well. I did. I, I got to, I, I slid something under Linda's door here while she was here. So I walked through the rehab room yeah. side of it. And was like, oh my God, this hallway looks amazing. Yeah. The rooms look as good as the hallway do. Yep. We're in for a great treat. And then Jared saying 106 days until Animal Kingdom bread and service. bread service. <laughs> and somebody on Facebook, 83 days until staying at Boulder Ridge and Animal Kingdom Lodge. And Nick is saying zero days and hello on, from Nick. their room at the Grand Cat. Nick, Nick, you're killing me. I got to wait two weeks. <laughs> But you know what? I mean, that that's that says something about, you know, how what an awesome member of, of yeah. Nick is of, of our community and our family, because he's at the Grand Cal right now 
and he's tuning into our show. Absolutely. And it's what, six o'clock there? So you still yeah. got three, four hours of hitting the parks over there, Nick. So, well, maybe that's true. Maybe he's got three hours after we hang up tonight and maybe go hit the park. So that's what we've got going on, Ron, for pre show countdown tonight. A lot going on. I love it. Yeah, a lot is going on and a, definitely a lot is going on. So let me come back in and get the, the show queued up tonight and we'll get things kicked off and we'll start our pre show. Uh, uh, actually, uh, roll our tape and all of that other stuff. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Minneapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Michigan, Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesia, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lovia, Boardwalk, Kalani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, Grand Floridia, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening. To and you're listening. You're listening, you're listening to, to my, to my, 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 Welcome home, neighbors, to episode 147 of My DVC Points Community Hall Live. Tonight's show is brought to you by our friends over at DVC Resale Market. And I'm going to keep the ad read short and sweet tonight because our number one point and bullet point, the thing to talk about tonight, is the direct prices are rising and the resale prices are declining. And that gap is getting wider and wider. So in lieu of a long ad read tonight, I'm going to go tell you to check out the best website in all of DVC Resales, which is dvcresalemarket.com, our sponsor, and check out Fact Check Us over there. Look at their historical prices on their site. Fact Check Us to make sure we're telling you the absolute truth about the direct prices getting higher and the resale prices getting lower. You owe it to yourself before buying direct to check out the price difference and know the premium you're going to pay dbcresalemarket.com. Every single agent there is a former Disney direct guide. So you do not have to pay Disney prices to get that Disney level of service. With that being said and done, we're going to jump in today's show all about buying direct is getting more and more complex. And to help me out on this, I've got my direct buying analyst research buddy, and we're going to welcome Ron Shammer to the show. How are you doing tonight, Ron? Chad, how are you? So great to be here this evening to try to uh, unwind some of this information out there that we're getting and and try to make some sense of it. So I don't know if we'll get it done, but we'll try. We're, we're definitely going to try. And just so you guys know, <laughs> right up front, Ron and I are not licensed real estate agents. We are not giving you financial advice. We are giving you our opinions on this and our head scratchings on this is just everyday DVC members who bought this product, love this product, and have both bought a lot of direct points and yeah. some resale along the yeah. way as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got both sides of the fence coming back into mm -hmm. this. We don't really have a dog in the fight as to what you do, but we're, we're, we like doing these direct shows. We got a lot of great feedback from people, and there's a lot of shows out there that won't talk about buying direct because they have resale sponsors. That's not us. We talk about it because we think you guys need to make an informed decision about what's best for your family. And the only way you can have that informed decision is by engaging with members, finding out what we think, what works for us, what works for our family, what didn't work for our family. And then you can come back in and have an informed conversation with your guide and make your own decision about what's best for you. If you agree with us, make comments below. We'd love to hear that. If you disagree with us and you can be respectful, Make comments below. We'll air your comments. We'll we'll bring you on to a show if we think you've got a really good point. Make a whole show about it. We don't have a dog in this fight. We're here to help you guys make informed decisions. Sound fair, Ron? Did I, did sounds, I cover sounds, everything? Sounds perfect. And as you said, Chad, uh, anybody out there that would have comments or opinions either way, I would love to hear them because, uh, as Chad stated, uh, we, we this is just what we think. And, and uh, get just bring your thoughts. We want your thoughts. We maybe we're missing something. So don't be shy. Yeah, that's, that's really true. So let's come into this and let's not bury the lead here, Ron. And our first thing, a point of discussion in here is direct points are getting more expensive while resale is getting more reasonable. Mm -hmm. Talk to me here, Ron. Yeah. So basically I, you know, I, for one and Chad, I know we all have our opinions on the cabins that just came up for sale here. And that's kind of the most recent, uh, 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 
stat we have, right? That's the most recent one. Yeah, it's uh, the most although, recent one. Right. Although we still have three others uh, that are still available directly through Disney that are new points. Uh, but using the cabins as an example, uh, I, I'm, I think I, I will love to stay at the cabins. I was on the fence about maybe purchasing a few cabin mm -hmm. points, you know, maybe get 50. So every third year, grab a, a, a decent amount of time because they are super friendly points charts. We, we both know that or anyone who's, who's looked into them. The points charts are extremely favorable, uh, but I'm having a hard time with a couple things. One, you know, they're coming in at the price at two and a quarter, right, per point. And then, you know, I was excited to get that email on, on February 1st about what the incentives were going to be. And then wah, when I got the, wah, wah, yeah, wah. when I got the email, that's exactly what played in my head. You know, that, that old, uh, that old buzzer, wah, 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 wah. it was, uh, it was so like, it, what yeah. happened? I, Cause we both bought Disneyland tower direct when it went we on did. sale with the opening day incentives. Yep. And I, it, I it bought was, the grand Floridian when, when grand flow two came out because the incentives were, were extremely uh, favorable to existing members. So I had to jump in there. Uh, and then this one, it's like swing and a miss, man. You, you weren't even near the ball. It, we're, we're looking at this like going, what happened? Because we're both direct owners. We love buying direct. We love our direct benefits. We right. love a lot on resale too. Don't get me wrong. Of course, plenty of those. <laughs> right. But I mean, we looked at this and we went, okay, 225 opening day price out mm -hmm. the gate. And then if I bought 200 points, I'm getting what, 11 bucks from a point off? Uh, at 200 points, yeah, you're at $11 a point off. You, in fact, you want to move the needle at, well, here, let's not bury the lead. Like you said, you can get $11 a point off at, at 200 points. If you went all the way to 1,000 points, right? You take five times as many points. What would you think that that incentive would be? You'd think it'd be pretty, pretty juicy, right? Well, mm -hmm. yeah. You're at a whopping sixteen dollars a point. If you buy a thousand, you get a whopping five more dollars a point point off to buy five times or you know, five times the amount of points. That really? <laughs> when, and these are existing what? member Correct. deals. Correct. Right. When Disneyland Tower dropped the existing members deals, I bought two hundred points and I think I yeah. got like twenty two dollars a point off. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to sell the first year of points for twenty two dollars. And I paid in the like what what was it like low one eighties ish yeah. per point yeah. when it when all the dust settled on there, and yeah. I'm looking at these this trailer park turned into a timeshare. <laughs> Let's just call it like it is. And the incentives you're looking at are like ten bucks a point for buying two hundred points. Yeah, like yeah, I love it. You're killing me here, guys. And then and then yeah. the price jumps up as well. It's so, funny, Chad. I'm looking at the chart here, <laughs> and and uh, you know, I was only thinking about buying 50. And I know there's never incentives for 50 points, but maybe at 100, 150, you start getting something halfway decent. And at 100 points uh, for the w wilderness cabins, <laughs> you get two dollars a point. It's almost like just keep it. You probably need it more than I do at that point. Come on, it's insane, Ron. It, it's yeah. like mind blown insane, and. <laughs> So Chris makes a comment here that says it would be nice if they would put some of the VGF points that they are roofering up for sale. And yes, because they've been buying back Grand Flow yeah. for the last few months now, but it's not been a whole lot of points. No, so not, they can't not really, aggressively. Yeah, it hasn't no, been that aggressive. No, it's been a couple hundred points, a couple right. contracts here and there. Right. Just enough to let you know the, the rover monster isn't mm -hmm. completely dead. Right. But <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and then Jared says the point charts. They are so soft that I don't think a lot of people are going to be buying 150 plus. Right. It doesn't make sense. There's no grand villas. Mm -hmm. There's no two bedrooms. There's no premium views from what we've seen. No, they're all the same price. And they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're less than a one bedroom. They're more than like between a one bedroom and studio is, is where these things are falling. Yeah, if I recall, Chad, I was looking for July. Remember, I said I might try to sneak one in, and I know by the time they come available to existing members, uh, you know, after the new purchasers, there probably won't be much inventory with only one or maybe two of the loops becoming open. Uh, it is ridiculous. I was like, I was looking for four nights potentially. It was eighty-eight points. I mean, it's in July, like mid-July. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. un, un insanely low. I think it was studio esque. 
Yeah, I think some of our super sleuths out there have determined there's about 68 points that they've declared in inventory and <laughs> really? 68 possible rooms to be booked, right? Okay. Now. okay. Unless they like get a rush of sales, but from what I gather from inside sources, wow, it's pretty crickets over there in sales because somebody was like saying, hey, when do you think they're going to be reselling these first uh uh, cabins points mm -hmm. and i was like well they really got to sell some first okay <laughs> like it's can't, can't resell what's what never sold to begin with <laughs> yeah uh, yeah man. and so yeah that's it that's a really great point there jared that uh the point charts are soft and we're at a time frame right now where the january due statements are out they're mm -hmm. due february 16th was our, our last day to pay in full without penalty mm -hmm. And so the market gets flooded right now with contracts and the price softens up. And you would think with the resale thing softening up that direct wouldn't pull back their incentives the way that they did. So we're looking at this going, now is not the time to be buying direct. No. Like it, it, it's, it's really not. And if you're really, 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 really convinced that now is the time buying direct after all of that, do yourselves a favor. I know these points, what is it? April 1st that we, these, these current offers expire. Yeah. Wait until a couple of days before April 1st to sign all of your paperwork and to get your deal finalized. So that then your 10 day, um, get out of jail free card mm -hmm. where you can get out of this, rip up this contract and say, Disney, I want out when you're within that 10 days and you can look and see what the new incentives are. Because something tells me if these incentives are not working the way we think they're not working, we might see a little bit better incentives. That I, I would out. hope so. I would hope so. I mean, I and don't if, know what they'd be thinking if they don't. Yeah. And if you've inked a deal you know, March 27th, then new incentives roll out on April 2nd. You can rip that contract up and yep. say, give me the new incentives and, and save yourself a, a couple hundred bucks. The other thing I'll tell you to do right now is... If you know it, an existing DVC member that happens to live in a state that allows member thank you gifts. Mm -hmm. I know Michigan was not one of them, but Florida is. And if you know a member, ask them for their referral code. If you don't have a member, you can ask. You're welcome to use mine. And it's just mydvcpoints.com slash dream it forward. Dream it forward. That's the actual name of the program. And if you go to mydvcpoints.com slash dream it forward, it'll send you straight to the Disney's website with my referral link. The first person that, that does that, I think I get a $150 gift card, which is why I tell you throw your friend a bone. If you can, if you can't, by all means, please use my link. I haven't, uh, it, it's only I'll February find, and I haven't had mine come in yet. I'll, I'll find mine too. <laughs> I'll find my link. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. After mine comes in, maybe I'll rotate it over to Ron's. <laughs> so if Illinois is a state that allows you to do that. Uh, you know? Illinois doesn't allow anything, so I have no idea. They'll take your money. I don't know that they'll let you give it away. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely good at taking your money there <laughs> as well. So, Ron, any more thoughts here as to, like, what's going on with incentives and why they're shrinking right now? You know, I as I try to, to make sense of it, um, I, I really struggle. You know, we, We've had this conversation uh, here in, in the beginning of the show to kind of beating a dead horse, but yeah, I really don't understand why I wish, I hope there's someone out there who maybe has another thought on it, uh, that maybe we're not thinking or we're missing, uh, or are they just not concerned with selling direct points right now, which seems just completely asinine to me. It's the other thing. I don't know. I is like, is this really truly inflation coming up with them? And instead of them raising the points of the, the contract, you know, 6% a year to come back in and do, do this. Are they just taking away the incentives? But then I go, no, wait a minute. They've already raised the, the stuff 6% because you're looking at what did we end up buying at? It was like 225 a point and now it's two or it was 230 a point. And now it's 239 right, for right. Disneyland tower for the tower. Yeah. So you've well, already went up a good amount in less than a year. This hasn't even been on sale a year. Not and to mention up, the not, dues and the tax too went up. <laughs> yes, the dues skyrocketed. Yeah. And a bunch of people right now are looking at this cabins at Fort Wilderness and are saying, whoa, <laughs> them dues. Yeah. And the only thing I can figure out there is it's the cost of housekeeping 
and their transportation time to get from building to building and their cost of hauling your towels and delivering them building to building. Because if you stop and think about it, if if mousekeeping comes back in and cleans a room in Bay Lake Tower, mm -hmm. they are like, what, 15 steps away from the next yeah. villa? If even, yeah. And they keep all of their towels and supplies right yeah. there indoors with them. But what happens over at all of these 300 plus individual cabins? Mm -hmm. Now we got to pay mousekeeping travel time in between this. And, oh, they need more towels. Oh, they need more supplies. Oh, they need to refill the soap. Oh, all of this back and forth time is just going to escalate this up even more. And that's a hard labor cost going forward. Yeah. And, and yeah. believe you me, I do not complain about mousekeeping. I am yeah. in some of the, the Disney union groups around here and one of their biggest, loudest supporters for those guys earning a fair wage. Of course. So I'm not complaining about it. I'm just telling you, this is what's going on there. Yeah. If you choose to make this your home resort, get ready to pay them dues. Cause I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And Chad, just to bring up, cause I know it hasn't come up before when we're speaking about the cabins at Fort Wilderness is this, this whole pet friendly thing. That's going to take a lot more time. That's going to take a lot more wear and tear on the furniture and, and all of the, the things inside of the cabins. And, and I don't think it's been clearly stated. I've, I've heard some rumors that they're all going to be pet, pet friendly. And then I've heard some that are, that are saying that only uh, you have to request pet friendly. So we'll find out definitively. Well, I guess it should point. be a booking category. We should be able to book and try yeah. to see that by now. Is there I a mean, pet listen, friendly room available to book? Right. Right. Because of the fact of the matter is there's a lot of people out there that could have allergies and it's, it's not even pet friendly. It's dog friendly, right? Cause you can't, yeah. you can't bring anything but a dog. So it, it's dog friendly, but there's people who could be allergic and, and potentially have a problem if they get into a room that they shouldn't be in. So I, I just see a lot of a lot of gray area and a lot of potential issues with, with these things. So, yeah, it's and, and Nick brings up this point as well. He goes exactly. at the resorts that have strong cash bookings, they are less likely to be concerned about brisk DVC sales. That is 100 percent true, Nick. Yeah. We've seen it in Alani. Yeah. They could care less if that thing sells out or not yeah. because they have the ability to sell the rooms at Hawaii hotel room rates that are astronomical. So they're like, eh, you can, we can make a nice profit from DVC members and get it all now, or we can make a boatload of cash going forward on the hotel side. Cause the resort does sell out, believe it or not. Like every weekend there is sold out because yeah. locals come back in and, and they look at it like it's a great water resort vacation, someplace great to bring their kids. So Weekends are hard to book there simply yeah. due to the amount of fact of locals coming back in and using it as a staycation. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of great hotels there. I don't think any of them are on par with the water park and all the amenities and Disney mm -hmm. friendliness that uh, Alani has to offer. Yeah. So I think that's what's going on there. And I'm hundred percent with you on that. Well, and we both know that the cabins at Fort wilderness have a very strong cash following They're They're consistently booked mm -hmm. right now. So Maybe that's why they're not as concerned because they maybe they feel those people will still come back and buy the rooms for cash. Yeah. And if they declare inventory and sure. DEC members, you know, don't breakage, buy it, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever breakage, they'll put it up and, and they'll mm -hmm. get them booked. Okay. Absolutely. Because we know buying or we, we know booking there for those golf cart parade times, yeah. like during Halloween and Christmas, <laughs> is just, it's insanely popular. When I yeah. say insanely popular, I'm talking about, Fans that go gaga, goo goo, the whole nine yards to the point where I'm my advice is if you're going to buy direct there, consider buying a fixed week for either yes. the, the parade weeks yeah. at, at October, at December, so that this way, when you get ready to resale that thing, you've got a really strong carrot to dangle in front of your resale buyer. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 may make that may make Christmas at uh, Wilderness Lodge at Copper Creek or Boulder Ridge seem like a, an easy get. <laughs> yeah, it, it very well be. could at, yeah. at that as well. So I think we've kind of covered this point yeah. here. Direct's getting more expensive. Resale's doing that. Do your comparison on all of the incentives that have happened. When we do this, we come up and go, this doesn't make sense to us. No. Because I know you jumped on the Grand Flow bandwagon. We've had a bunch of other listeners. We were coming in saying, buy Grand Flow Direct, buy Grand Flow Direct. Yeah. It's on a super sale. 
And what was, was insane. Were you guys getting it for like 180s? 169, I think. At one point, it went down sub 170, t- you know, touching the 160s with uh, Magical Beginnings and whatever else they were offering at the time. And then we're seeing it in the 150s, 160s on resale at that time. Yeah. So it was just like it was such a small gap there. Yeah. Our, our strong, I feel like Jim Cramer with the bye, 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 right? <laughs> bye, 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 <laughs> right? J- just because, I mean, it's a small gap and you get all the benefits of buying direct and all of those perks yeah. for a little tiny yeah. difference. Yeah. Now we're looking at this and we're going, the first Disneyland Tower sold at yeah. 160 a point. <laughs> okay. And they're selling it for 239. Right. Like right. It, it's, it's a, a, the difference there. What are you really yeah. saving by That's buying cool. resale? You got to ask yeah. that question. And what's that worth to your family? And well, at 10 bucks a point, I'm in. Yeah, okay. Right, right. At $80 a point, Ron? Not so much. Not so much. Had, and not that we can't hit that buy, buy, buy button. And this will segue probably to one of the next topics, though. We're hitting, we're still hitting the buy, buy, buy button, but it ain't on the direct side of the fence. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. The we're, resale we're side back looks in. great. It is such the resale a side is, is really looking great. Yeah. The other thing that's like got us scratching our heads is. <laughs> Buying direct is about ready to get a lot more complex, Ron. Oh, yeah. Because right now you've got four active properties and the Poly Tower coming soon. Mm -hmm. And those four properties are Alani, Mm -hmm. Riviera, Disneyland Hotel, and now the cabins at Fort Wilderness. And soon we're going to have that fifth one come up with a brand new tower or tower add-on over at the Polynesian Resort. Yeah. And so it's like, and then you're going to come back in and go, well, Alani and Polly, you know, have softer resale restrictions. Your buyer can stay at any of the classic 14 resorts. You buy Riviera, your own, your resale buyers only stay in Riviera. You're buying Disneyland Tower okay. direct or resale. Your buyers only stay in Disneyland Tower, which I don't think is that big a deal in my yeah. opinion, because there's only two resorts there. And a lot yeah. of people are going to want to own some points in Disneyland, especially when this thing sells out. Yeah. And resale will kind of be your only game in town at that point in time. Well, and not to mention if they do have some of these uh, massive advancements with the parks <laughs> coming up, that's going to get really attractive. So. That's oh yeah. Thing. Yeah. When, yeah. when the Disneyland forever oh, or yeah, forever. Yeah. Yeah. Disneyland forever project comes in and they've torn down our parking lots at all of the, the grand Cal and over there at Disneyland tower. And they've converted it into avatar land and Wakanda and, whatever awesome stuff they've got coming <laughs> like you're going to want to own there. Okay? Oh yeah. It, it, it's going to make it even more of a destination yeah. and it's going to make it a longer destination trip right. because it's no right. longer going to be a two day park. Exactly. It's going to go up into the three and four day land mm-hmm. when that happens. And not that you can't have a great four day vacation there now, but it's, it's going to push it right. Yeah. It's going to push it into more and more time, which is what we've got going on here in Walt Disney world. Mm-hmm. Disney World seven day vacation, you can't do it all in seven no. days. Not even close. So you can do it all in four days in Disneyland. You could probably do it all in two days in Disneyland with Genie Plus and some, some strategic planning and rope dropping and all of that other stuff. Yeah. Right. And good shoes. <laughs> and good shoes. Yeah. And good shoes. Definitely good shoes. But that's all right. You know, it, it's it's this point is back to another head scratcher. What are these guys doing over here that we are seeing five active properties come up and the incentives are are telling us, we don't care if you buy this or if we don't. There's not like one set of incentives out there that lead us to go, this is a hot deal. Jump on it. No, none of them. It's none of them look all that attractive. And I'm an Alani super fan here. (laughs) But when I start seeing 225 a point for Alani, yeah. With a ten dollar or twelve dollar incentive, and then I can buy that same thing for one ten or less on resale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm not giving you a hundred dollars more a point for your Alani contract. Like it, it ain't happening, Ron. No. Like, I'm charitable, but to charities, <laughs> I'm not charitable to corporations just because they don't want to give the incentives that are necessary. That's all. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of feeling the same way as yeah. well. So, okay. Any other final thoughts here on the four active properties, Ron? You know, I, I just feel like, obviously you, you made great points. Aulani, they're selling the cash rooms. They're not as concerned with it. I think 
sooner or later, they're going to have to do something with Riviera. They can't continue to let that go years and years and years without, you know, putting a substantial dent in the, uh, in the amount of points that are sold. Uh, Poly Tower, I think, will sell extremely well as long as there's incentives that make sense. But if indeed it is part of the original association, which all points are leading to, I know it hasn't been officially mm -hmm. confirmed, but everything is is looking the, that way. Um, I think that is just going to increase, and it already had a small effect on the resale prices to come up a little bit, and I think that'll probably bump those up a little bit. But if it's part of the same association... Um, and, and resale doesn't come up yeah. to where that spread thins out a little bit. They're going to have a hard time, hard time selling those unless they run out of inventory. And then the cabins, I think we're in the same kind of predicament as Aulani because they do have a strong following that they probably are, are some actuaries somewhere have probably made sense. The fact that they'll, they'll sell enough to not have to worry about selling DVC at a, at a reduced rate or with, with massive incentives. So that, yeah, I, no, that's about all I got on these. Yeah, Jared makes a comment that if COVID didn't happen, he has to believe Riviera would be sold out. Five years on that. If it didn't have the restrictions, Jared, I'd be right there with you. 100%. I think that thing would have flown off the shelf, but I think those re restrictions are such a kick in the teeth. Yeah. And they went down like a lead balloon with a lot of members that it just didn't make sense to a lot of us. And we were out at that point well, in time. It, and, and here's the other thing, Chad. And I, I don't know if I've brought this up before, but Riviera, when you do a points comparison, I mean, you're on the same level as the Grand Flow. And in fact, if you look at the room layouts and designs, it's it's almost an identical uh, mm -hmm. copy of the Grand Floridian, right? So you're talking it's about yeah. it's very close. You're talking about a resort, and I understand that it's on the Skyliner. But other than being on the Skyliner, it, it is a very nice resort in a moderate location. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Uh, you can't walk or take a, a easy transportation or a transportation that is uninterrupted because we all know that weather happens in, in Florida, Central Florida, and that Skyliner is done. So then you're back down to the buses and those are temporary. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Riviera, if, regardless of COVID, would be sold out right now. Um, I think they need to do a little yeah. something more because there's not enough to draw you there. It's a beautiful resort, Jack, and I stayed. I mean, we stayed there finally. Well, last a Skyliner summer. is beautiful when it works. When it works. Unfortunately, we're in central Florida that is right. lightning prone, and they right. shut that thing down constantly for lightning. And when that happens, you're, okay, it's going to take me yeah. 10 minutes of my vacation to right. get from Beach Club to or, or from Epcot to my, my resort. Right is now turned into an hour, hour and a half or more. Right. Right. So it's just getting crazy. And I love the resort, Chad. I mean, I think it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. I think it, uh, you know, when we stayed there, the Bar Riva is one of my mo favorite uh, quick serves now, if yep. you will. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great, I mean, I don't oh. particularly care that the pools are right next to each other and there's not a lot of separation there, yeah. but. But, but there's you know, great I, amenities. I, I'm with you. And Bar Riva has got one of my favorite drinks on property, the Il Tormino. And, and, or <laughs> Il, Il Tormento or something along those lines. It's absolutely delicious. And Jared's saying he's word. a Riviera super fan. He's going to go down swinging. As you and should, props Jared. to you, Jared. Absolutely. Yeah, Jared. We love having Riviera super oh. fans on here to, to kind of bring the yin to our yang on this and, here, buddy. And just to clarify, so, I am not I am not against Riviera. I love the resort. I just think that it's it's there's just yeah. a couple things going against it still. That's all. Yeah. The restrictions, mm -hmm. the reliability the of the Skyliner. Yeah. Those are my, those are my big downfalls and the, and the point cost per price. I, yeah, you're, you're on par, but between Bay Lake and grand flow, but you're not monorail. You're still don't have the reliability. You still mm -hmm. don't have the magic and the classicalness of right. the monorail. Right. And I can't, I can't do it. Your preferred I, view I, yeah. is Caribbean beach. Yeah. Call it what it is. That's your preferred view. You're looking over Caribbean Beach Club. Yeah, which is not magical in my opinion. No, no, no. And then, so Rai Kim says here, spec your speculation on the poly tower pricing, will it be on par with VDH? 
I think it very well could be because could wasn't be. Grand Flow a little bit higher than Riviera the whole time it was there? And then they then they wanted to blow it out and get rid of it, so they right. put the super incentives on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I remember correctly, that's it. I think this will be on par with what we saw happen at the Grand Flow because it's his sister resort yep. right there. Yep. And, and it, it's going to go with that. And it wouldn't shock me if they don't come near the end of that and put it on a super blowout sale just to get rid of it. Which is what they should do. Yeah, which is really what they should do. So we're hoping opening day, we're hoping that thing has a very short sales cycle mm -hmm. and they blow those points out of there. Because if you're waiting, this is that's really what I would be waiting to look for right now is when's that thing going on sale? What's my prices? What's my incentives going on? And I've got all eyes on Poly Tower. And I'm a poly owner today. Whether they add this in, mm -hmm. whether they don't, I'm still looking at that tower. And I've got even more incentives because I've got 100 points direct at, at Poly Tower today. It'd be nice to be able to bump those up and get something a little larger if yep. I needed to. So, okay. On to our next comment. So Linda is saying that she agrees with you. Uh, same thoughts, Ron. And Gillian's got some, some interesting points. He, he says, personally, I feel like Disney has something coming to make resale less attractive. I feel like they just must have some plan that will push folks to choose direct over resale when it's clearly not financially sane to do so. Well stated. Well stated. Something must be coming. That being said, very happy with my Grand Flow direct purchase last fall. That was a bargain. And that's what, like, I, I want people to, to enjoy the show, and I don't want to gloat too much when we were yeah. right. But it's like, this is why people listen to our show as well. And then Chris comes back in, and, and on that comment, he goes, he picked up a fully loaded Alani subsidized dues right. contract Recently at $120 a point. Very thankful you pointed those out on a previous show. Those Alani subsidized dues are phenomenal. If you want to stay at Alani, if you just want the cheapest dues out there in the entire DVC yep. network, Alani subsidized dues are the droid you're looking for. Uh, so, <laughs> untouchable, baby. Untouchable. Yeah, they are. They are on my radar to buy and add on because I love Alani and would love to be able to 11 month book that and get a cheaper room and stretch those points even farther. And listen, you know, they're that good Chad, because if they do hit the resale market website, how long do they last? Maybe an hour before yeah. people see them and snag them up. I mean, they're gone. Yeah, they're, they're gone. They're not. Long. It takes the guides a little bit of time <laughs> to sell them, but for educated buyers that listen to our show and yeah. know what they're shopping for gone. Right. But, you know, in talking with like Andy and, and Jody and all of that, yeah. it, it takes a little bit of, hey, you know, this is what's going on. And then they're like, is this for real? Like, <laughs> I, I get these cheap dues till the contract expires. Yeah, you do. You what's do. the you catch? Really what's the catch? <laughs> yeah, very much so. And so Jared's saying he loves the fact that Caribbean Beach is right next to Riviera. He goes, I have a two for one resort, which is a debate for another day. Point yeah. well made. Okay. Well made. It, well made. If you want to head over to Sebastian's and come back in and check out all the cool stuff that Caribbean, Car Caribbean beach has to offer. It's right there. It is walking distance. Oh yeah. Right around the corner. Yep. You can even take the Skyliner over to their Skyliner if you want to. Sure. And then, you know, tool around their resort a little bit. If it's running. <laughs> yeah. If it's running. And if it's not running, I think you can walk because you can. it's, you can. There, there's some Caribbean beach rooms that are really close to Riviera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If they were going to Epcot, they might be better off hopping on there. Although if they hop on at their own one, they would have a guaranteed empty gondola to jump in. Yeah. Where they'd have to wait for a, an open spot if they came in and, and right. jumped on it at Riviera. At Riv, yeah. Which is the other thing that's kind of don't you know, like not it. So great about <laughs> Riviera. Like, no. If you're I'm in the midpoint luck, of this yeah. deal. Like when you go any place from that resort, you got to wait for an yeah. empty cabin. Right. Right. And yeah. So Nick is saying that DVD have really hinted at crackdown on rentals recently. So that could affect resales. That would have a huge effect. So yeah, very little, very little. And um, yeah, I, I don't think so. Cause I don't think there's a big commercial market that's out there. And our contracts say we can do like 20 rentals a year, Okay. which when you look at how many points it takes to do one rental, mm -hmm. even if you did 20 one night deals, you're still looking at north of 200, 300 points, which is more than most people have. 
Right. So, right. And, and you don't normally rent one or two nights. You normally no. rent three, four, five, right. seven, some, something along those lines. So I don't know how much they can crack down on it when it's in our contract that we can do it in black and white. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have to see what, what that uh, speculation is, Nick. I'm glad you brought it up. And I wasn't even aware that they were talking about uh, potentially yeah. breaking down on rentals. And believe me, we all know that there, there are folks out there that grab up lucrative weeks weekends whatever it is and, and mm -hmm. try to rent them out as soon as they grab them and no that's not great but you know it, it, it's a valid point that we all own the same points we can all do the same thing some of us don't think that way some of us do and if it's up to disney to do something about it well god bless them but if they don't you know we know what we signed yeah we, we definitely do i would much rather see them crack down on walking before i oh, would the, the whole rental thing because rentals is black and white they're going to get some serious legal pushback if yeah. they start cracking down on that beyond 20 a year. So really, really, truly is the case. And it's, and he's saying, yeah, mostly the mega exactly. renters companies, not average users. And Agreed. yeah, Agreed. there are some serious people that make their living doing mega oh, yeah. renting. And yeah. cause you're, you're looking at, you know, one person's in, in a, in a group, they're just their posts alone. You're like, yeah. how the heck do you have this many points? Well, yeah. And, yeah. and then you go on the deed site and, you know, the uh, whatever the site is for the state of Florida, and you're like, holy crap. <laughs> you see their name with, you know, 25 different contracts. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're obviously Disney. doing it commercially. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and yes, I have no problem with Disney cracking down on those mm -hmm. people. Right. No problems there as well. So, Ron, let's come back into yeah. our, our final point here on buying direct. And talking about the difference in restrictions, dues, and expiration dates. So I guess really if we added a fourth one on there, it's like what does the home resort advantage get you? Yeah. And so so we'll come back in. Alani and Poly Tower, as far as we know for Poly Tower, will be classic restricted. Mm -hmm. You can only stay in the 14 resorts that were in existence prior to 2019 when they enter introduced these resale restrictions mm -hmm. and i am working on a show right now talking about the five-year history of resale restrictions we are now five years since yeah. that came into place ron january yeah. of 2019 is right. when that right. dropped mm -hmm. and we're now february of 2024 so we are five years and one month into this and what predictions and ramifications do i see coming forward in this as well so stay tuned be be sure to subscribe for that show because it'll be an interesting one with a lot of analysis going into it. But, and then you've got the, the three with the new restrictions. Mm -hmm. So you've got Fort Wilderness cabins, you've got Disneyland hotel, and you've got Riviera. You buy one of those three resales. You are only staying at that resort. So caveat, there's something weird going on over at, the Fort Wilderness cabins where they're in this new Palmetto trust yeah. Yeah. deal. And the best I could get out of my guide was their official comment on it was that a trust may allow them to do something a little bit more flexible with the points going forward. Mm -hmm. What that means, we don't know, but that's kind of what the rest of the industry has done with it. So like when you look at Wyndham and other places that have went into a trust, it's always added a little bit more flexibility to the points. So it could be a bad thing. It could be a good thing for right now. We just know it could be some more flexibility. That's yeah. it. Right. So, and then you're talking about the dues and when Disneyland tower opened up, we all went <gasps> at the yeah. dues and the transient <laughs> tax and then went, Oh, that's just Disney historically inflating a new resort really high so that they don't have to raise them much going Please. forward. Yeah. That initial sticker shock. And, and, and okay, and this opened up in September. Two months later in November, we got sticker shock again <laughs> at the dues skyrocketing and the transient tax going up for the next year. And the transient tax is a percentage, and the percentage went up the next year. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, holy bejeeber, what's going on <laughs> with this stuff here? So uh, pay attention to those dues guys yeah. and pay attention to the expiration date. Yeah. Because you're, you're what you're looking at 2062, I think for Alani. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be like 2068, I believe for Polly or 2065 someplace in there. Have to take a look. Yeah. You can, you can look that up and, and fact check yeah. me live here. Yeah. But, uh, 
And then, of course, Riviera is, you know, we're five years into it. So you've got 45 year, more years left. Disneyland Tower, you're 50 or 49 years, depending mm -hmm. on your use share when you buy it. And, you know, we've got all 50 right now on over here at the trailers at Fort Wilderness Cabin. Yeah. And yeah. With that said, Chad, and I was looking at this, listen, it's Jackie's birthday today and, and we were with the kids and, and my daughter, who is a big fan, obviously all of my kids, some are uh, bigger fans than others, but Casey is a huge fan. And uh, I was just kind of pointing out to her how much of a buyer's market is in the resale market and just jumped on DVC resale markets website and uh, using one of my resorts, uh, which I now have, uh, have had points, my first resort I purchased, which is Saratoga and Saratoga has very reasonable dues. Saratoga, obviously we know about the location. Mm -hmm. It's outstanding. If you love Disney Springs and you can get a bus to anywhere from there, uh, not as uh, lucrative if you're, you know, jumping into the parks, but the amount of Saratoga contracts that are sub $100 a point right now on the resale market is astronomical. There yeah. are a ton under a hundred dollars. And listen, I understand it's a 2054 resort, but that's 30 years. That's not a small amount of time. I'm a, I'm going to thank God if I'm still here in 30, 30 years, I'm turning double nickels here in, in California next month. So if I can make it to 85, I'll be a happy camper. So I'm with you, Ron. Is, yeah. It's not a small amount that you could get for such a damn reasonable amount. And with, with very decent dues, it's if you're thinking about DVC and, and you've got the, the means to do it, and you can go resale and you don't care about the uh, the the direct benefits, man, if you're not jumping onto that site every day to see what's out there, you need to be because this yeah. is your time. And, and then again, let's look at dues over at Bay Lake Tower. Yeah. Yeah. And resale Grand Flow, the lowest dues in Walt Disney World. Absolutely. Okay. In, in the second, in, in, <laughs> yeah. And on the monorail. So yeah. you want to own a resort that's got low dues, but mm -hmm. high point costs. Correct. And then take your low dues that cost you minimal money and go spend them at another resort yeah. that's got low point charts. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get the best bang for your buck in DVC. Yep. yep. Right. And what's happening at the cabins right now is the complete reverse of that. It's opposite. Yeah. It's, it's like the antithesis of what you would want as an owner. I want to own and, and I want to book something so that my points go farther like the cabins, but because there's less points per night sales to clean that room, it takes more dues per point in order for us to pay mousekeeping front end transportation, all of that other stuff. They just yeah. aren't selling enough points there yeah. to bring down your bang for your buck on that. No, no. No. So your bougie resorts are going to have lower dues over time. Mm -hmm. Your, your more common resorts are going to be less points with higher dues over time. Mm -hmm. And Saratoga is an anomaly there because so there's many 18 groups. buildings there, <laughs> yeah. right? Each with like 40 something bookable rooms in them. Each. It's, it's crazy. There's a, there's it is like the largest timeshare in all of DVC and it is the most resold timeshare yeah. in the world. Yeah. Okay. Nobody even comes close to the amount of points that change hands over at Saratoga Springs. It's crazy. So if you're looking for a great place to buy in, ride it out for a while, try the waters and then get out. Yeah. Saratoga Springs. And I think that's exactly what you did. Wasn't it, Ron? Yeah, it is. I bought, uh, you know, the first contract I bought from Jody at DVC resale market. I, I bought a couple hundred points at Saratoga and uh, through the years now, over the last four ish years, um, I don't, I still have some Saratoga points, but they were direct. I, I purchased those for a different reason. Uh, but I, you know, right now I own all direct points, which I never thought would be the case, but that Grand Floridian deal that we talked about was, was so lucrative that I had to sell off a couple of those resale Resales. contracts. Yeah. And it was and made, such a great buy at that time. Made money on them <laughs> at the time. What should we call this, Ron? You kind of like blue washed your points, right? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. And we'll so you, you sold off the resale and you bought direct and, and, bought and you direct, made them right. all blue benefited. And, and they are, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and there is, listen, I understand there's a benefit because all of my points are now direct. So I don't have to worry if I want to book at the cabins. I don't have to worry if I want to book at Riviera. I will have the ability to. And obviously before 20, what was it? 2019 when all resale points could be used everywhere that, you know, that was before the, um, uh, they changed it over right to, uh, mm -hmm. 
in 2019. So all those folks that bought then, but to your point, Chet, you, you told me once a while back about how many turnovers there are with these points and, and the average DVC member only keeping contracts for, you know, a seven year, years, seven, yeah, seven years. years, a very short window, which is why when some people want to bring up to me, oh, well, there's, you know, there's only 30 years left on it. <laughs> the average contract holder only lasts seven. So even if you're that guy or that girl or that person, you're still going to be dropping this hot still, potato yeah. with 23 years left on a Saratoga contract. My daughter's 36. If she took a Saratoga contract, she's going to be 66 years old by the time it expires. That, mm -hmm. That's a long time. That's a long, long, yeah. long, long time. Conversely, yeah. a day is coming, Ron, when you yeah. buy a 2042 contract. Oh, yeah. And you're going to ride your seven years left. And at the end of that seven years, you're going to be looking at somebody going, well, there's only what, 10 years left on this. Yeah. And 10 years is that's got a short ring to it. Okay. I, I am already at that level. I don't understand how they're still getting what they're getting for the 2042 resorts when there's only what 18 years left on it. And, I, and some of them are stripped. So there's only 17 you know, yeah. because there's no, it's like, I, you know, when does that, when does that breaking point happen? I, that's going to be uh, talk about having some, some content <laughs> when that starts happening. Yeah. Oh my I, goodness. I think the comment of the night award goes to our buddy, Nick Anderson on this one. And I'll just throw it up on the screen here. He goes, it used to be so easy to explain DVC. And now there are so many like accepts. Because, like, we're their biggest salespeople out there. Right, right. Us, the super fans that love this product. Yeah. We're your biggest salespeople out here. Yeah. And now your, your biggest sales team is going, huh? Huh? <laughs> like, we don't get it. We, no, don't buy from yeah. the mouse right now. Like, it's right. not, a, not a great deal. That's perfect, Nick. Nick, I and, hope you're around in a couple of weeks, man. I want you and Steve to, to be at the Disneyland when I'm there for those couple of days. I hope you can make it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's just like, yeah, this is just mind blown. Yeah. And then Frederica asks a great comment here. So what happens when we come to the end of life at a contract? And what happens is you own nothing. The deed reverts back to Disney. They own a completely paid for resort. And they probably charged us maintenance dues and kept it up to Disney standards all the way to the very end of this contract. Mm -hmm. So I have always said my... Mission here is to buy my contracts, use them for as long as makes sense. And when it no longer makes sense for my family and I've gotten my value out of it, drop that hot potato and let somebody else be holding the bag come 2042 or whenever that deed expiration hits. So, Chick, can I jump in? I just want to clarify, Frederica, are you talking about when we come to the end of the contract life or we come to the end of our lives? <laughs> because so. that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, I'm assuming it's end of contract life here, Ron, because like that one... Like we could get into all kinds of different yeah. stuff, right? It, it's, yeah. uh, yeah. I hope yeah. <laughs> I don't want to think about the end of my life yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't either, but I made plans with who I, course, I think is going to be in control yeah. and you know, me and Jesus are pretty tight. So yeah, you know, I, I, I think I'm good, good. but, uh, for those who differ on that, <laughs> Hey, I've got all the respect in the world. We're still friends. Hey, okay. I, I am, I am in, I'm reading from the same book you are, Chad. So that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 Definitely want to give a, a shout out there. And, um, yeah, so I think that pretty much wraps up our show tonight here, Ron. Yeah. And um, any other final thoughts on on buying direct? And <laughs> if only, Nick, we were immortal. You're... So, <laughs> yeah, if uh, if only. Like, why is Evanescence playing in my head? Evanescence song is in my head. <laughs> my immortal. Yeah, when I get up in the morning, I definitely don't feel uh, immortal there, Nick. It's, <laughs> it's, the 50s are catching up with us, man. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, but Chad, yeah, final thoughts that you were asking about. I'll just jump in with this. Um, I am obviously not against buying direct from Disney. Obviously, I have a a pretty good sum mm -hmm. of direct points right now. I mean, um, you know, a decent amount, a very good amount. And if I were purchasing right now, I would choose not to buy direct, and that's okay. Uh, the The main focus and the main point, just just to bring that to bring this back into to to the the most important thing which is if you're a fan and you want dvc the nice thing is we have different ways to get at it right we do have direct when it makes sense we do have resale when that makes sense 
We do have the ability to rent still. We always have the ability to, to feed our need, if we will. We have mm -hmm. the, the ability to do that. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. Uh, we're always going to run into scenarios that they're not going to make sense. Like right now with the direct market, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it didn't make sense to me when Grand Cal was selling for $320 a point on the resale market. Just yeah. didn't make sense. So there's always yeah. going to be that. Uh, I just feel blessed. And, and I say it every time I'm on here with you guys. I feel blessed to be a member of this community and be able to be a DVC member yeah. and that will never change no matter how perplexed i i become with what they're doing so i just want that's, to make sure that's I make it, that Ron. Point. we love this product yeah. we love helping other people make decisions about this product and kathy's right here with you direct never made sense to them when the extras just didn't justify the cost i think we were saying at 10 or 20 dollars a point difference the spread yeah it's worth it for when the spread makes sense it's worth yeah. it to, to look at direct when the spread makes sense, it's worth it. And at a hundred plus a point, I, I'm, I'm sticking with the classic 14, Ron. Okay. Yep. I'm just telling you that that's, that that's my take on it. I and gotcha. yeah. And Gil makes a comment here. He says, I'm 44 and everything hurts. LOL. 2042 <laughs> seems like a decent deal. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are, there are some people who look at 2042 and go, Hey, I'm good with not taking a Disney vacation in 2042, but every right. year up until then. Right. And that's a clean deal. It's a clean break. I don't have any inheritance. I don't have to leave my kids anything. Yeah. It's a clean deal. And I love it. And for those people, Hey, we yep. get you. We, we validate your point and right. we see like all different kinds of, of views and angles here. That's what makes our show so great is, yep. We have what, what we think we'll air what we think, but we'll also air what you think as well and invite you to share it either through a comment or through joining us on one of our shows as well. We are a platform. We've had well over 400 community members join us in, on podcasts, interview shows, review shows, everything. And we are still encouraging more people to come join us as well. We do not want to become a little click of DVC no. people. But uh, the unfortunate thing is, is we've got to put together a show so we know who has good lighting, good camera, and yeah. can articulate a view. So we do tend to go to those people. But we are always yeah. open to more. And yeah. don't yeah. feel. Chad, to your point, the more widespread this community, the better this community becomes. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, you, you're right. You don't want to just be a handful of people that are that are just spewing your opinions. Without having contrasting and, and other opinions, mm -hmm. It, it doesn't make sense. We're not here for the membership then. So I, I agree with you a thousand yeah, percent. Yeah, we no are millions. definitely 100% grassroots. And that's mm -hmm. how we can truly say we're here to air sh stories and opinions that help benefit you. Yes, we have sponsors. Yes, we want them to succeed. But believe it or not, our listeners love us because we speak truth to them. And sometimes the sponsors really aren't all that happy. But uh, that's okay because the truth is what it is. Yeah. And that now's a time when they're loving us because we're saying buy resale, buy resale. I was probably getting a few eyebrows raised at me, Ron. You know, this last summer when we were, you know, waving the buy, 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 buy on bye, bye, Grand Flow bye, Direct. Bye, bye. <laughs> right? And yeah, no, without a doubt. But they also understand. They yeah, also they're understand. all direct guides. They, they get it. They completely get it because they've all sold them on both sides of this as well. And with that, we're, I think we're going to. Um, End with this uh, comment. Oh, I want to end with this comment. Uh, thank you guys. Great show. But uh, somebody on Facebook has this. Haven't been on a while, but my husband really liked the cabins. Glad to hear the opinion on buying directs. Thanks. And if your husband finds joy in the cabins and you find value, I just met with my guide on the cabins. He was like, mathematically, it still makes sense over time to mm -hmm. buy DVC through the cabins and you will save money. I'm like, well, Randy, I'm going to trust you on that opinion <laughs> over time, but it yeah. may be more than seven years time, especially yeah. if you're financing it at Disney's rates oh. at 17.99%. So <laughs> that could take you a while to come back in and do that. Yeah. And with that, we are going to take Judy's note here and wrap this up and say good night. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you to all of our sponsors over at World of DVC, DVCresalemarket.com, DVCrentalstore.com, and Monera Financial. I have full faith and confidence you can do business with any of our sponsors and feel great about your transaction because I have done with 
well, extensively with the first two. I've never financed a contract through Monera, <laughs> yeah. but I know a lot of listeners have and have given us great feedback on that as well. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hopefully you've learned something in today's show that'll help you go out there and plan something magical for you. And if I created the banner in a little break here, <laughs> mightybcpoints.com, dream it forward for a $500 referral bonus for new members. If you really don't believe what we say and you really find value in buying direct, hey, I can get you $500 off or another member can as well. You can use my link. You can use a friend of yours. Do whatever makes sense for you. Mine is there and it's easy. So with that being said and done, good night, everybody. And thank you for